Hey everyone, Bird Head here and I hope you're all staying safe and well welcome to my latest Citizen Channel feature. Uh, please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button and push the bell notifications as well so you know when these vlogs are coming out and uh, of course do lots of stuff, city past and city present, so uh, please push that uh, notification button. Make sure your notification set to public as well, don't forget, otherwise you won't get to know, but uh, press that subscribe button. Please check out my links on screen as well for uh, Facebook and Twitter and also don't forget I've got a little film and TV channel on YouTube as well so if you want to have a little break from football check that out and of course uh, on Facebook and Twitch I will check every few days and follow and friend everyone back on there and also don't forget I have a, I have a sort of links with losing business on Twitter they promote uh, city fan related small businesses local businesses which need our help perhaps more than ever these days don't they so please don't hesitate to get in touch with me if I can promote or put some stuff out for you in, in one of my uh, magazine vlogs my city magazine vlogs and don't forget I'll always give a shout out to local local projects or charities etc etc just get in touch anyway please enjoy today's today's citizen channel feature thank you today yep we're going to continue our look at city number nines and today we've got a gentleman uh, perhaps a name not familiar to to all of you or most of you or certainly not that familiar to me till i started looking at him i'm going to look at a guy called dave halliday yeah in city number nines uh, he's born 11th of december 1901 so that's probably why most of us haven't heard of him in dumfries in scotland and he played for City between 1930 and 1933. Yeah, quite an important time for City, that. Uh, Peter Hodge uh, was, the, was the manager at the time of City. He'd won promotion back to the first division. Bit of a yo-yo club, weren't we, in those days? At the end of the 27-28 season. A season where, despite being in the second tier of English football in the second division, we actually uh, were bedded in at Main Road and we were actually the best supported club in England. There you go. Oh, always been a small club, haven't we? Uh, to go along with this, of course, uh, expectations were high as we sort of approached the 30s. But of course, City never City never do things the easy way, did they? We always, we always shoot ourselves in the foot when things are going quite well, unfortunately. And fans' favourite, yeah, fans' favourite top goal scorer Tommy Johnson was inexplicably sold. Uh, and as a result of that, the crowds dropped. I mean, the average crowds dropped about, uh, I think it was about six seven thousand seven thousand average uh, sort of missing from the gate because obviously we did we sold one of the uh, crowd's favorites um the following season a guy called tommy tate came in and played at, at sort of number nine and uh, but then after that he went he went very quickly and city had an opening didn't we we had an opening for a number nine slot and a guy called dave halliday who we're going to talk about today signed for just under six thousand pound which wasn't a, a, a miserly amount in those days in November 1930, yeah, so the season had kicked off. Uh, he was unkindly considered a bit of a reject, an Arsenal reject. He was, he was at Arsenal, who uh, were not a bad little team at the time. But it was just a case of the right place at the wrong time, as far as he was concerned. He was stuck in the reserves and only made sort of patchy first-team appearances uh, for a, uh, an on-the-up Arsenal, a very, very good Arsenal team. Uh, before he joined Arsenal, he'd scored 90 goals in 126 games up in Dundee, so obviously up in the Scottish League, good, good, still a good quality at the time. But then he moved to Sunderland and scored 156 goals in uh, 166 games. Uh, a little bit prolific, wasn't he? And of those goals, he scored actually 100 goals in 101 game in his first 101 games, which is a, was a record in itself. So this sort of pushed Arsenal to sign him, but uh, he would only actually make 15 appearances for Arsenal. But he did score eight goals, so again, a, a, you know, better than better than 50%, wasn't he? That's for sure. Uh, at Dundee and Sunderland, as I said, he scored plenty of goals. He was actually the top scorer in uh, in all the Scottish League uh, for Dundee. And he was actually also a top scorer in all the English leagues when he was at Sunderland. So again, a, a couple of great records he held. Uh, but it was a guy called Jack Lambert, who we'll, we'll talk about him very briefly later on again, who kept him out of the Arsenal team. 
Of course, Halliday thought perhaps he was a little bit better than that, and he wasn't very happy about that. So, uh, reserve team football, wasn't it, his sort of thing? So, uh, just a week after City had got rid of this guy called Tate, uh, in came Dave Halliday for that uh, just under 6,000, as I said before. And he would wear that number nine shirt. Yeah, they didn't wear any other numbers. I mean, sometimes our number nines do have a little dabble with other numbers, but he would uh, keep that number nine shirt as long as, as long as he played for City. Anyway, on the 22nd of November... 1930 i've even got a, a copy of the cover of the of the program there it's fantastic i just found that just looking through uh looking through the internet uh, a crowd of 23,481 on the 22nd of uh, November 1930 saw him score two yeah in his debut so not bad not a bad start scored a couple of goals in his debut a 3-1 win over Bolton Wanderers at Main Road uh, and of course that immediately sort of uh, impress the City fans, of course it would. I mean, we're still still sulking about Johnson, but uh, yeah, that sort of in, impressed the Blues that were there. Uh, and he, yeah, indeed, he had a chance uh, quite quickly that uh, season. Obviously, his, his debut was in November, but come uh, Christmas Day and Boxing Day, we had a double header against Arsenal at home and away, so we had a chance to sort of get one over of them, didn't he? But uh, didn't sort of quite work out. He didn't end up on the score sheet, and we lost. We lost at home four one, and we lost at uh, high. 3-1 so didn't quite didn't quite go to plan perhaps, perhaps Arsenal had made the right decision who knows but uh, there you go but perhaps Arsenal hadn't made the wrong decision because they actually went on to uh, win the league that season and they would also I think win it another four times so I think they won it five times in the 30s so as I said, they weren't a bad team, so there's no, no shame on the fact he couldn't he couldn't get a regular spot. But uh, hey, he was at City now. Uh, despite this, of course, Halliday was still finding the net in other games. Uh, he didn't score against Arsenal, but uh, as always, a goal against the enemy is always good as far as the fans are concerned. And he scored at Old Trafford. Yes, yeah, scored over at Old Trafford in a, in a three-one win the season where United got relegated. Yes, fantastic. Uh, he scored in that, so obviously that impressed the City fans. That was on the seventh of February, nineteen thirty-one. Uh, and as I said, uh, in when he when he came to City, we were struggling. We were fifteenth in the table. He scored fourteen goals in twenty four league games. That th that first uh, two thirds of a season, he was with City. He played in all but three of the games, uh, uh, and the three he missed a certain gentleman called Matt Busby, better known as a wing back, but he he played at number nine in the three games that uh, Halliday actually missed out on. Oddly enough, despite scoring those fourteen goals in twenty four games, he didn't actually get any goals in his last nine appearances. Uh, but his uh, obviously his presence had certainly helped City uh, finish a respectable eighth by the time we finished the season. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? But as I say, he did did go on a bit of a. Uh, uh, a bit of a famine towards the end of that that, that uh, sort of season. In 31-32, Halliday took only a couple of games. I think it was the second game he played to get off the mark. And by the fourth game, a home game against Derby County, he scored his first uh, hat-trick for City. And his name, of course, would appear frequently in the scoring column that season, this 31-32 uh, season. I mean, an example of just how prolific he was uh, for, a, for a set time. Uh, between a game on Halloween, 31st of October, against Huddersfield in uh, 1931, to a game in February the 6th, 1932, a game against Blackpool, he played in 17 league and cup games and only failed to score in four of them, scoring a total of 20 goals, including another hat-trick at Sunderland in a 5-2 win on January the 2nd, 1932. I don't think the Sunderland fans uh, needed reminding of just how good this guy was, but uh, I'm sure Mr Halliday uh, did that anyway. He just reminded them what they were missing. Despite not the greatest season in the league, we finished 14th. We did get to the Cup semi-final, uh, and with Halliday contribu contributing four of the goals in the, in the rounds leading up to the semi-final, of which we played Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, we actually were pretty much the dominant team, but we just didn't put our chances away that day. And it was a last-minute goal. The referee literally blew his final whistle as we re-kicked off after the goal. But, uh, yeah, we were beaten by a goal. Assisted by Halliday's nemesis at Arsenal, of course. We did mention him early on that Jack Lambert, he assisted the goal. And it was a bit, a bit of a goal that hit everything and eventually went in, unfortunately. But... Uh, there you go, we were all ready for a replay and unfortunately we lost the semi-final so obviously, uh, sadly he missed a chance there of actually get, getting to Wembley with City that season uh, yeah, similar to the previous season the goals did dry up a little 
and the semi-final defeat in March definitely had a det detrimental effect on City as a whole, not, not just Halliday, uh, as we finished the league season poorly. But this wasn't helped by the fact that uh, our manager, yeah, Peter Hodge, had decided to go, or he'd been offered a lot of money to go to Leicester City. So by about early March, it had all been done and dusted. So literally, he was asked to stay on to the cup, uh, cup semi-final to, to see how far we got. And once we were out of that, that was it. He was sort of more or less in charge of, uh, of Leicester even though it wasn't quite sure who, who was I think Wolf Wilde was the secretary then and he actually took on responsibility he didn't particularly want to of managing the team but uh, yeah so that didn't help the fact that we didn't really have a manager for the last few games so it was a pretty much a downturning form not just for Halliday but for the team as a whole um he scored only four then in the last 14 games of the season and three of those were another hat-trick uh, away at Birmingham City at the end of March in a 5-1 win. So, as I say, that's two out of four, so 12 games he went where he didn't score any goals, but then again, City themselves didn't score many goals. But it was Halliday's best season. He scored 32, 32 goals in 45 league and cup games and he missed only two games all season. So, as I say, despite that... Uh, poor run uh, at the end obviously it, it was a fantastic season for him it was brilliant I mean he scored plenty of goals as I said we mentioned that run earlier on were from October didn't we to to uh, February so despite all this and despite it ending up as a disappointing season it was definitely his, be his best season while he was at City but uh, as we said there changes had happened uh, Wilf Wilder's secretary was convinced to take over as manager secretary as well uh, at, uh, at City and so as often happens when you get a new man in charge or a new man at the helm some players faces just don't fit do they and the problem started pretty early for Halliday he would play in only eight games that season and that was eight out of the first 11 games and he actually scored three goals all right not not prolific but not a total disaster but of course uh, it looks as though Mr Wilde didn't quite like what he had to offer and very soon uh, Halliday would find himself in the reserves and uh, of course Wilf Wilde moved a certain Fred Tilson up to the number nine spot uh, and even when Tilson got one of his many many injuries he's very injury prone Mr Tilson uh, even Wilde didn't even put Halliday in then he, he sort of instead turned to people like Alec Hurd to play number nine so I think the writing was on the wall wasn't it for, for our uh, Mr Halliday that uh, Wilf Wilde didn't particularly fancy him uh, and uh, he would even we would even reach an FA Cup final that season as well. So we actually got there. But uh, Halliday didn't play in any of the FA Cup games. And he certainly didn't play in the final. Where, uh, where obviously Tilson wasn't available again. Um, but uh, he, he would, sorry, he would miss out on that Cup final again. As he did when he played for Arsenal. As he played for Arsenal, they actually reached a Cup final as well. He missed out on that. So he had two opportunities of getting to Wembley. And sadly missed both of them. So after his best season, it was back to being well down the pecking order as they had been at Arsenal uh, for the striker role. And uh, as I said, Halliday must have surely thought the writing was on the wall and his days were numbered at the end of the 32-33 season. But he was still there, he was still there for the 33-34 season. Uh, Tilson, of course, as I said, uh, had come on, become our number nine. Even with even with his glass legs, his glass knees, there was no guarantee that Halliday was that would ever replace him as a number nine. And it wasn't long into the 33-34 season that uh, Tilson was injured again but Wilde firstly turned to another striker called Syme yeah he put another guy at number nine even before Halliday but but he did get another chance he did get another chance Halliday he got another shot at number nine on the 23rd of September a defeat at Middlesbrough and he did keep that number nine shirt for the next three games Scored his uh, last main row goal, goal in a 3-1 win over Blackburn Rovers and then scored again in a 2-2 draw at St James's Park. But uh, a home defeat against Leeds on the 14th of October would be his last first, first team start. So four games, two goals. Again, not a total disaster. Uh, Heard Tilson and Syme would then share the centre-forward duties for the rest of the season. And it turned into a good season for City who finished fifth. And uh, of course, we did go on to win the FA Cup but Halliday again he didn't feature he didn't feature in this at all um, he'd already left City by there he'd already gone to uh, uh, to Clapton Orient yeah so of course it was uh, Tilson as well who actually is two is two goals against Portsmouth would actually bring the FA Cup back so back to to Manchester so in a, in a way if you like the Arsenal manager was probably correct he picked the right the, the right guy to play for them and obviously uh, in a way 
Wild was probably correct in in sticking with with Ty, with Tilson despite his injury, you know, his injuries, etc. So there you go. Halliday moved to Clapton. Yeah, he moved to Clapton Orient. Uh, I think it was the forerunner of this Orient. Um, he scored thirty three goals in fifty three games for for uh, Orient. Uh, for City, Halliday made 82 appearances and scored a very creditable 51 goals. That's not bad going. And there was no doubt in his ability. He scored goals wherever he went, of course, all the clubs we mentioned before. Only actual legend Dixie Dean had a better scoring rate amongst players who scored over 200 goals. So he, I say, he was in very, very good company. At City, he was respected, although not as revered, perhaps, as Tommy Johnson by the fans. But uh, he was still very popular the, the brief time he was there as a number nine. Wilf Wilde obviously uh, thought he didn't quite fit his style did he? It didn't fit in with Wilf Wilde's plans or his style of play and that's fair enough but in the history of uh, City number nines I think Dave Halliday was up there as one of the most certainly one of the most prolific uh, scorers anyway in a relatively short time he, he spent at our great club and I'm it was interesting to just have a little bit of research and find out a little bit about him. He sadly passed away on the 5th of January 1970, age 68, so rest in peace. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this latest City Number Nines. Uh, a certain Dave Halliday was at City between 1930 and 1933. If you do have any memories or perhaps you've been told by your dads or your granddads or your great-granddads about this guy, just, just drop us a line or DM me or whatever you want to do and let, let me know. It does sort of set people's memories off and remind people of things, these these uh, little vlogs. So let me know anyway if you any any sort of anecdotes to share, if, if there are any out there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good rest day. Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other. So we meet here again on the Citizen Channel. Or perhaps you have a look at my film and TV channel. If you get a, have a break from football, have a look at my film and TV stuff. Whatever it is, I only ask to get one simple thing, don't I? Please, stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.